What is up, you guys, and welcome to another episode from yours truly, Discarinder. And of course, this is one of the long time coming Pocket Topics episodes I really wanted to reach and talk about. And uh, the reason for that is because these three guys, as you see before you, has something very unique between them. Not only are they the primary sweepers of the bug types, of course, on the physical side, they share the exact same base total of stats and they are distributed in a similar way actually and um, we're gonna talk about them through the generations we're not gonna take account of generation one mostly because the bug typing was not really a prominent typing in that generation for obvious reasons one of them being that it actually lacks the habs in the first place um, I do believe we got twin missile and twin needle and um, or not twin missile pin missile and um, yeah, just in general, not that good, not worth mentioning in that extent. And also, the reason I'm not having Scyther here is because Scissor is the superior evolution and Scyther is left behind for a reason. But, with that said, these guys, like I said, they have some kind of rivalry in between each other and there are this really similar way with their base stats, of course, being that they are all having a lot of attack. Like, they share pretty much the same kind of attack total and a decent bulk between them, distributed in a different way, and are of average speed. And uh, just in all honesty, we're gonna look into, of course, their base stats, and after that, we're of course gonna talk about their development throughout the generations because things did happen after all. And uh, we want to going to talk about why that happened and if that change could have been changed in any other fashion, or just talk about why it happened. So, with all that said, let's actually look to them. And we're gonna first mention, of course, regular pins here. I'm gonna show its stats here. And that's too much. <laughs> Sorry about that. As you guys see, um, ignore the Mega Evolution under. Uh, couldn't really do it in a different way. Um, but you see, same base total here. Um, and, you know, a lot of, actually, not a lot of HP, but, you know, a lot of attack to it. Decent defense, worse special defense, and so, some average speed basically. Uh, if you look to Hero Cross, um, it actually is distributed in a similar way. It's more special defensive, they share the exact amount of speed, um, a bit stronger, of course, and a bit more HP, and um, less bulk, of course, which is a hindrance. But in all honesty, uh, pretty much close to what um, Pinsir is. But of course, having a fighting stat behind it, which uh, Pinsir lacks. And then we have Scissor. And Scissor, as you guys can see, is a slower. 20 base speed slower. But that's okay, because it got, instead of that, more balanced defenses. Having exact same defense as Pinsir, and a bit more special defense than Pinsir. Uh, having more special attack, yay. And also, a lot of attack. This one is definitely the stronger one. Actually, rivals, of course. Heracross, which is probably the closest rivalry with a 5 base attack. But as you guys see, um, there are strength here. Um, they are really, really strong, all three of them. So with that said, uh, we're actually going to look into their development through the generations, like I said. And Pinsir was to be considered UU. It was, of course, only two tiers in... Uh, um, sorry, in... Um, damn it. In generation 2. Um, the reason that uh, Pinsir is in the lesser tier is because it lacks um, decent stab. I do believe its best stab is actually hidden power bug now that the distribution was not there. And small stand set plays, uh, nothing big to it. Um, also have access to submission and body slam, which this of course is the, your average set. Uh, it's a definitely good mon, but due to the lack of stab makes it less effective. Uh, then we got Heracross, which was we consider OU. Mostly because of one big thing, and that was Megahorn. Uh, Megahorn was actually introduced in Generation 2, being an extremely strong bucket attack type. I do believe Heracross was the only one being able to use it in this generation. And other than that, it had reversal and not a decent fighting stab uh, at this point. Could not utilize submission nor brick break. I do believe brick break was introduced here. And it just overall, it was effective Megahorner. And of course, it could act as a hidden power fighting. If you wanted to fight instead, we did not want to utilize, of course, the reversal move, which of course forced you to go for Enjoy, if that was the case. And then we got Scissor, and Scissor was actually blacklisted to this point, and you want to know why? No priority. No priority whatsoever. And being extremely weak to fire was not a good thing here. 
nor has it been in any iteration, but it definitely was showcased here. Um, and of course, I do believe its strongest steel move was Steel Wing, um, or Metal Claw, no, Steel, steel Wing, right. So, usually this one was actually quite limited, it could deal with Psychic types fairly well, but it was still not on par. Now, in the Ruby Sapphire, things started to change a little bit, it was to be considered OU, uh, still blacklisted. Um, it was still a good defensive typing, which helped it quite a lot. And of course the ability Swarm made it a slightly better, and having access to the likes of items this time, which of course being choice of bad was extremely dangerous with this one. Really showcased there, like I said, it's still blacklisted, but was definitely better in uh, in OU than it was in previous generation. Here across, God Guts. Like that's, it's, it's as simple as that, but also should be noted that with Guts also came the, I do believe we got access to Brick Break here, Reversal, it still could do a lot of things, I got access to Salak Bear this time, which boosts his speed, which was an issue in the previous generation, where it couldn't have speed, for example, Dudrio. This time it can only set up against it. Go for Salak Bear, Reversal, Oko's, a lot of things. Weezing, I do believe, was the only fair type in a good deal with this, and that, not even that was actually safe enough, with, of course, Heracross having access to the likes of Earthquake. Now, let's see what happens to our hero, Pinsir. Yu Yu. He got freaking Hyper Cutter. Of course, Hyper Cutter is not too bad, actually, make sure that the Intimidate doesn't work. But it still doesn't have any bug, <laughs> like a bug uh, stab or anything like that. It still has to be reliant on hidden power bug for its strongest move. It's still got a very, very nice move pool. But like I said, the, the lack of stabs makes it kind of bad. And of course, Guts is by far superior to Hyper Cutter. Having been able to actually soak a, um, a status change and... Um, retaliate is pretty darn decent. So Pinsir might be the better defensive typing, of course, but to some extent. But um, in this case, it still falls due to the lack of stab. And then we come to Diamond and Pearl, and Pinsir is now in you with Moldbreaker. And yeah, something big change here. With of course physical and special splits. Um, for some reason, Pinster just couldn't hold a candle. I do believe x Scissor was introduced in this generation and close combat. But what that meant was only that his predecessor was just that much better. Heracross got blacklisted, yes, but it now had close combat and Scarf. And of course, it has actually it got swarmed this time, right? So yeah, things just got all kinds of weird. Heracross also of course fall to some extent, but it still is a good mon. But it might be good, but something changed. Something changed for real. And that is Technician Scissor. With Bullet Punch and Uter. This Pokemon got actually really, really dangerous because of that, because it now had priority and a really, really decent strong Steel type behind it, or Steel type base attack, but of course a bullet punch. Choice man bullet punch was just extreme in this generation. Uh, very few things could take it. But of course, banned and beaten actually not an. Uh, it didn't sacrifice a whole lot uh, of its lack of speed because it didn't really need it in the first place. So Scissor became a real powerhouse and was definitely dangerous because of that. Of course, U turn also made sure it could come out. It wasn't tough to actually switch that nor in or out this time because it actually could get momentum out of his moveset and of course like I said with ban it only made it that much dangerous. Uh, in black and white this kind of continues to be honest there's not really a whole lot happening and uh, we got acrobatics this time which is it's fairly interesting a flying gem but still is in all honesty the same kind of moveset. Um, nothing big has changed here it's exactly the same probably a bit better due to the fighting stab I actually got access to instead of pursuit. Um, Heracross then what happened to him? Not a whole lot. Sadly, not a whole lot. It's still stuck in the same role, without the priority, and a lot of fighting types now getting bits or slightly faster than what Heracross represented before. Heracross was actually two bit represented as a very fast fighting type, and now was stuck in somewhere in between. And without priority, Heracross was just falling behind. Um, it had access to guts this time, which, or I mean Moxie, with his hidden ability, which is dangerous, mind you. 
but it just wasn't dangerous enough with other mods doing pretty much the same. And with that said, what happened to our godly pincer? It's still a new. It's got Moxie, which is incredible, but something wasn't working. Something just wasn't working with Pinsir. And uh, it is the foremost mentioned. Uh, the lack of stabs is now taking a toll here. It does have a lot of things to offer a team. Uh, it has a broad move pool. But Bug Stab is not the best kind of stab to have if it isn't with a dual stab, which actually makes sure it can rival other monsters that it's gonna face. Um, Pinsir does struggle against the monster that is weak to like a whole lot. And. Uh, it just couldn't hold a candle to the meta as it were. So with all that said, in X and Y, Mega Evolution got introduced. And uh, it didn't happen too much with Mega Scissor. It got a lot stronger and a lot more bulkier, at least. That is what I can foretell. Or foretell. Um, so Scissor just got uh, way dangerous, but it still acted the same way. Uh, mind you guys, Choice Bandit Scissor is still stronger than a regular Mega Scissor, but... Of course, that is not fair, consider that you catch the setup sword stats with Sys Mega Scissor. But, uh, yeah, nothing really happened. Uh, what happened to Heracross then? It also got a Mega Evolution, but it got the skill link. It got extremely strong. Uh, but it was a tad bit slower, which is hindering it a bit. It became a wall breaker instead of a pure sweeper. Or rather, its pure sweeper capabilities has been nerfed since, the gener or since Generation 4. When it wasn't as fast as it needed to but mega form of it made sure that it could actually hold a candle against a lot of things and wall break very 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 many mods and just in all honesty um there is really nothing stopping this mod outside of our talent flame and i think the talent flame is the reason this guy didn't prevail in the first place because well it just can't <laughs> it just can't outspeed the brave bird and brave will destroy this guy but um, in all honesty though, there are a lot of fly- I mean, even Mega Pidgeot with just outspeed will annihilate this one with a hurricane. But it's still nice to see the God Mega Evolution. It's a bit sad it didn't actually continue what they actually saw with Mega Pinsir. Making it freaking faster! <laughs> Which was incredibly important. But also, as you guys see, Mega Pinsir, much like Mega Scissor, got the necessarily boost in its bulk and together with of course its massive attack this time it didn't get as massive as um, Heracross but as you guys can see uh, Heracross had 185 base attack while Mega Pinsir has 155 which means those extra 30 went to its freaking speed and not special defense and that's why Mega Pinsir is the way superior one and actually with actually Irrelate uh, this thing got a bit more interesting because this meant the quick attack was now a bullet punch and a very very strong such bullet punch is is much like a technician boosted early which means that this mega evolution got a lot of things it lacked before it could now hit really hard and together with swall stats in this and the speed there is really nothing surviving this combination and mega scissor stand tall today as one of the strongest bug types in the meta. Uh, the only thing holding us back is this new flying typing, but it also is the same reason it's so good because the flying stab actually makes sure that it hurts things for real this time, which until generation 6 it did lack. And uh, yeah, Mega Pinster got the treatment it needed, and um, it does resist a few things, yes, but it's definitely weak to a lot more. <laughs> But yeah, Mega Sister is still a very, very strong mom because it's fast enough to make sure it doesn't get hit. Which, in the end, it's all you need when it comes to a strong Pokemon. You could be as fragile as you want, as long as you're fast enough to not get hit. Take note, Ramper does. But yeah, that basically is the video. I really wanted to tell you guys the story about the, the how strong Pinsir really got, and how long it's been holding back, and it finally is here. Uh, I'm so glad to see that that happened. I really like Pinsir, um, one, definitely one of my favorite mods, and I just I could never use it. So seeing this evolution and see what happened throughout the generation really showcased that it wasn't too far off of becoming a really really strong mod. It just needed the right stab and the right speed 
to actually distinguish itself from its two rivals, which has holding its form quite well. Sister, of course, holding the form slightly stronger than the other two. Uh, so yeah, with all that said, I want to thank you, of course, for joining me for this episode. It's been great sharing these thoughts, and I really want to hear what you guys are thinking. Do you guys think that um, these guys still are in some kind of rivalry, or do you think that's long overdue due to new evolutions like, for example, Scolipede? Uh, tell me. Uh, I'll, I'll gladly read and listen to it. So thank you so much for actually listening for, of course, this episode of Pocket Topics, and i see you next week on the next episode. Until then, take care.